So I've had Live Scope Plus for about six weeks now. Um, so I've been on several bass fishing trips, several crappie fishing trips, um, fished out deep during the winter, and now have fished shallow, you know, going into the spring, crappie are spawning, bass are coming in, pre-spawn, about to spawn. Um, so I've been able to use it in a lot of applications and a lot of different types of water, gin clear water, really dirty water, water that's full of pollen, you know, so, and I, I want to go through a lot of that. I want to go through my experiences with it. Um, but I, I'll kind of just give a brief overview what LiveScope Plus is um, compared to the original LiveScope. The best way I can describe it, it's about a 35 to 45% improvement of what we had before. And it's just, as the technology gets better, we're able to get more throughput um, from the devices. We're able to get more clarity. We're able to get more separation. We're able to filter out more of the debris. Um, and, and so what that equates to as an angler is, can I see the fish in the cover and can I see my lure as it's approaching those fish? Because that's, that's ultimately what we're all using LiveScope to do. And so, you know, guys are already asking me like, well, you know, is it twice as good? You know, well, you know, no, it's, it's not intended to be twice as good. It's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a lot more target separation. So now when I look into a stake bed, I can tell which way the fish is facing when I look in there. Not only do I see that there's five or six or seven crappie, but I can tell which way they're, they're angled, which way they're going. I can tell, you know, they're on the back right corner of the pile because as I'm able to pan around, I'm getting such good separation. I can say, oh yeah, you know, I only see the, the stakes and the, the crappie when I'm facing, you know, this certain corner of the cover, even though most of the cover's over here. So I know they're kind of off in the back left. And so that's what I think LiveScope Plus is e extremely excelling at. So, I, you know, I got it when they launched the original update. Um, the original update basically means if you already have a LiveScope system, you just buy the transducer for the new one and do the update on your GLS 10 box and you'll, you'll be able to use the LiveScope Plus transducer with your original box. So I did the original update. I've done two, I've done, no, now I've done three updates. So they did, they, they had that service release, they've had a maintenance release, and now they've had another service release. So um, obviously people, they launched the color limit at the same time they were announcing LiveScope Plus. And so there's been a lot of confusion around the color limit thing. Now I'm gonna touch on that briefly too, because it, it does factor into the new LiveScope, but I think people are understanding those technologies incorrectly. So um, I'm gonna talk about all of that um, and, and show you lots of screens that I've captured over the last six weeks um, so you can have a better picture. And I'm gonna record some more today to show you. So we'll kind of go through it all piece by piece here. So I'm looking at a series of stake beds, but as I pan around, you see how I can tell which stakes are the far away stakes and which ones are the close stakes. Can you see that almost, you're getting almost three dimensional depth now. As I pan around, I'm seeing stakes at different levels. You can kind of tell which stakes are the back stakes and the front stakes. As I pan, you see some come into more, uh, more prominent and the other ones kind of fade away. You can kind of get a depth. And, and as I do that, I found more as I pan through the cover, I can tell exactly where the crappie is. Okay, he's on the far back right, or he's this side of the stake bed from me. Um, and same with bass, you know, I can see um, I can see the bass moving along on the bottom. I can see them sharking through bait. I can see when they're pushing to me and pushing away from me. So that's what you're getting with LiveScope Plus. You're getting this added depth element. And when I say depth, I mean looking three dimensionally. You know, I'm gonna see a couple carp panning through here as I kind of pan around and, but yeah, you can see, you can see such good clarity. And another thing I would say is like, I'm looking in real shallow water. You know, typically my LiveScope's not been super clear when I get in shallow water and, and you know and I'm getting so much better separation um, you know my screen's covered with pollen right now I've actually got a bad ethernet cable and still I'm getting this incredible picture um, I, so I, I you know me personally I've been blown away with just that part of it how much more definition I'm getting but the the big thing for me is the separation and you'll see that in some of these screens where you see a 
the crappie come to the pile, go through the pile, come up and get my jig as it's going over it. And you, you watch him, you know, come in, change directions, turn up all through the cover, you know, not just out in open water. You're seeing him do that in the cover. So as I go into my screens, I, you know, I went into sonar setup and I'm going to go, I'm going to start with, uh, normally what I start with, I start with noise reject, usually at low, and then I'll adjust out from there. On the installation, I went ahead and calibrated my compass with the AHRS on. Um, we'll go back. On appearance, I'm going to go, I'm going to set my color grain somewhere a little over 50%. Now you can, you can bump color gain up a bunch. What I've found with the palettes, and a lot of people don't know this, it, the more you bump pal uh color grain up the more you eliminate the these new palettes they've come up with that are almost tri-dimensional so they're shaded so if you turn the color gain down to 50 percent i can tell what items are hard and what items are soft based on their intensity um, if i turn the color gain way up everything's super intense so when is that good for fishing it, that's good when you're fishing for fish that are deep over out in open water and maybe just a little bit of cover but when I'm fishing shallow, I, you know, I want my, I want my color game, you know, I, I set mine at like 55, somewhere around in there. Um, let me get back in there. And then uh, the color limit. So that's the new thing that got added. What color limit does is, it, it, you know, when you get color limit, you do the update. Color limit's now an option on your graph. It'll start at zero. What color limit does is it allows you to clear up the dead space on your graph. So, you know, as you turn color limit up, it's gonna clear out the space, right? Well, so because it's doing that, you're gonna lose some of the information. Well, what you want to do is clear the sediment out of the water, um, but not lose your jig, not lose the fish, not lose your separation and cover. So you wanna, you want to set that kind of to a middle setting and then adjust your gain up. That's where everybody went wrong when the color limit setting came out. Everyone said, oh my gosh, I turned the color limit way up. Now I can't see anything. I've lost all my settings. My graph's terrible now. Well, that's because they didn't adjust their gain up. So what you do, color limit and, and gain work together. And so color limit allows you to clear the dead space on your screen because everybody was complaining oh i've got these lines and stuff all over my screen and you know people like me that that are avid anglers i don't care if my graph has some fuzz on it as long as i can see everything i want to see that's all i care about so but for the people that want a pristine clean screen you know now you have this color limit option where you can bump up color limit and bump up your gain and what that'll do is that your gain will show you the fish and your lure better and color limit will clear the sediment around it so again keep in mind if your gain's too low and your color limit's too high you're not going to be able to see your jig so you just again they work together it's not one setting and it makes your picture clean so people kind of lose sight of what how the live scope technology works and um you know, what I would say to that is all of these settings work together in tandem. Um, you know, so one setting is not going to make your graph perfect. And that's because we all fish different water. We all have different water clarities. We all have different bottom composition. So your bottoms are real soft. You've got to turn your gain up. My bottoms are real hard. I've got to turn my gain down or else I get too much ref reflectivity. And, you know, same thing with the ghost tree stuff. Guys are complaining about the ghost tree. Well, the whole point of live scope is it's multiple beams and inside of those beams is multiple frequencies so you have all of these overlapping frequencies and cameras all overlapping each other and so what you're going to you're going to get these signals that cross and they're going to cause dead spots the problem is is if we only did one frequency and one single signal we would only see one certain thing well and by having multiple signals at multiple angles with multiple frequencies, we can see a lot of things in the water, but we may have an issue where frequencies cross or angles cross and we get some dead spots. That's, that's just the nature of how that technology is gonna work. 
the the flip side of that when you know when it when it first came out we got hardly any definition because it was looking at a big wide picture and we could hardly see anything we could hardly make anything out that we could just tell that there was stuff out there away from the boat but now with the new live scope we've got intense detail now we're getting intense target separation with live scope plus and with that you know we have to understand that the technology is going to have some limitations so you know they they've come up with some pretty good ghost tree auto rejection settings now that's kind of what i run in mine so if you look here we'll go back so i've got color gain at 55 i got my color limit up to 60. i might even back that back down some you know say 50 40. because again i don't care about fuzz in the water um and then when i go back to my main menu my gain i've got bumped up to 66. Now, can I turn my gain way down? I sure can. Look how clean my screen gets when I do that. But also, you see how this fish is starting to fade away, too. You know, I want to be able to see the fish good. I want to be able to see the fish good in cover. That's the whole deal. I want to know what that fish is doing at the target I'm throwing at. So, uh, you know, I'll take a little bit of fuzz on my screen to make sure I don't miss my jig going right by that fish. So, that's everything to me. So, yeah, am I going to bump my gain up a little bit and get my screen? Yeah. You know, you'll notice my screen's got some... <laughs> I just cleaned my screen off before I started recording. That's how much pollen got put back on the screen while I've been talking. So, I mean, just keep in mind that same thing's going on in the water. So some of the fuzz you're seeing in the water is, is the lenses and the frequencies reflecting off of the pollen that's actually in the water dispersed like little sand pellets. It's... You're getting all kinds of reflectivity because of what's in the water. Never mind that Kentucky Lake just came up six feet, so it has picked up every piece of debris on the bank and put it in the lake. So there's all kinds of stuff for your graph and your transducers to echo off of now in the water. So yeah, are you going to get the clearest picture in the spring when everything's in the water? No, you're not. Like just If you'll just accept that and not say, oh, well, this technology doesn't work. It, it has nothing to do with the technology. <laughs> Nobody's going to make a better technology that can see through all that stuff. That's just the nature of beaming frequencies through water that have sediment in them. So, again, you know, that's my settings. That's kind of how I've set up LiveScope Plus. Um, I'll, I'll show you some of the screens and what I've been able to see out fishing. You'll notice as I pan around on this one, I see... You know, initially I see a crappie in the middle, but then as I pan through, I see four, five, six on the left side. So, again, that's what I was talking about on the depth. And then this piece of cover, you know, it's kind of laying at an angle. Um, again, when I first panned and looked on the left side, I didn't see too much. But then when I panned around to the right side, I noticed a bunch of big crappie up on top on that high right side. Um, and they were pretty aggressive. I was able to catch three or four off of it. Um, pretty quick um, you know already have pulled a few fish off ease it in a little closer and fishing for them but you notice as you pan around you don't see any until you get to that far side and then there they all are kind of bunched up on that one side of the cover so um, but yeah you notice how clean my screen is you know these piles are in 14 foot of water, but the fish are sitting in about eight foot of water, but I've been able to filter out most everything out of my screen. I'm in a more uh, a cleaner bay where there wasn't as much debris in the water um, and was able to pick off crappie pretty easy on these piles. But again, I'm using, you know, I've got my gain set to about um, 60, 60%. You know, and here you'll see, you know, I'm looking out 70 feet. And fishing these fish with a with a vantage point out to 70 feet so i mean think again how good a definition i'm getting with a screen that's zoom you know that is looking way out i'm still getting a ton of definition i'm still seeing exactly what the fish are doing um, and then you know on this screen as i pan in i get closer in again i'm, I'm getting lots of information about how the fish the fish are set up on the brush um, you know, these fish I had cast at for a while, and I decided to ease in a little closer and use a jigging rod and was able to get a couple of those bigger ones that would would follow the bait when I was casting it, but wouldn't, just weren't committing to the bait. And I decided, you know, I need to just drop a jig on their head or just kind of ease into them with a jig. 
Um, and that's what I did to, to get those fish to commit finally. So yeah, you'll see that, you know, that big one that was sitting on top for whatever reason, he just liked that presentation better than sitting way off of them and making a 30 foot cast and bringing it over their heads. So that's my rundown on LiveScope Plus. I'm, I couldn't be happier with the technology. Uh, they don't, they've done a wonderful job on it. And, and the, the thing I probably love most about Garmin is just how responsive they are as a company. Um, I've sent lots of questions in to them and, and they've got them to the engineers to get back to me so I can talk intelligently about this so I'm not speaking out of term. Uh, I don't want people to think like, you know, I know more than the Garmin guys. You know, most of this information is coming straight from Garmin and I'm just relaying it to you. But yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy with the technology. I'm extremely happy that they're constantly looking at it. They're constantly listening to feedback from their customers and saying, you know, hey, this is the issue I'm having. Hey, this is what I don't like. Um, you know, they, they release quarterly updates that are generally just, you know, here's all the new features we want to add to it, or here's some of the, the, the major things we want to fix or make better with it. But they'll also release a maintenance release in between that. And the maintenance release is nothing more than, hey, you know, we had a negative effect maybe on this certain head unit with this new, you know, transducer. So let's do a maintenance release in between that kind of alleviates those issues. Um, so again, they're a very forward thinking company. Um, I've been, you know, super happy running Garmin equipment the last three, four years. Um, very, very happy with the new LiveScope Plus. I've caught a lot of fish that I feel like I wouldn't have caught on the old live scope just because I would have looked at that piece of cover and thought I already got the fish out of it when really there was one tucked down there low kind of on the back corner that I that I missed before and now I'm actually I'm seeing that fish kind of you know as I'm getting closer to the piece of cover he's inching away from me but he's still in the cover so I kind of like that added depth I'm getting from the the live scope plus um, so if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us on our social media and I'll answer any of the questions I can